Welcome back, Forester Dragons. We're here for the last part of making our um, printmaking our color wheel. We did the prints of our hands, so copies, our printmaking artwork of our color wheel, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet, or purple. You turned each of your hands into a creature, and then you created strings coming down from each item, or each hand, and then you drew things that were going to represent that color. So purple grapes, blue water, green lime, a red apple, a yellow banana, and an orange cone. So let's go ahead and color those in, but we're gonna use crayon. But you need to trace them first with a permanent marker or a black crayon, and then we're gonna color them in. Now understand, on your items you have drawn, on your creatures, they also need to be those same colors. Now you don't want to take one shade of orange and color each thing that same shade. Use some different shades, and I'm gonna show you what I mean. Okay. So first I'm gonna trace down here. My glass of water, my grapes, my lime, my apple, my banana, my cone. Okay, now I'm going to start to color those items in. Now down here, okay, I'm going to start with one orange because it's my orange comb. But I'm not going to use just this orange. So these are all values of orange. Let me find some more so I can show you. Okay, but they're not the same shade. They're just different values. Okay, now I'm going to use these to color all my orange bird up here or orange hand creature did i make that one a bird no he's just a kind of funny funny guy okay so then i'm going to come up here and on my orange creature i'm going to use this dark orange to color in my nose and then i've got different shades different values um i want kind of um really bright one. Let's see what I have here. Maybe this one. Yes. Okay, kind of a neon orange. And I'm still keeping it all in my values of orange. Okay. So orange is done. I'm going to set orange aside. Now let's go to maybe red. So I've got different values of red. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to use this one, which is kind of um, purpley red here. And I'm going to also use it in here, inside the mouth. And I think my dog went down. She's stretching. She. <laughs> Those are my dogs. Okay. So, I may even, like in here, I can color white around the eye if I want. And I have these, um, oops, this crayon is coming out. I can color right in here. Hold on, Mariko. And then I'm just going to go down here and color the apple. Okay, now, I think we've done orange and red. Let's do the yellow. So different shades of yellow. Okay. Okay. So, maybe I will use this one on the edges of the tail here. And then maybe with this one. Um, beaks here. I'll color those. 
And then I have a banana right here. I'm going to color my banana. Hold on. So now I am coloring the banana down here. Okay, so we have all our yellows. Now we've done yellow, orange, red. So we're going to go to green here. So I'm going to get different values of green. I have lots of those. Okay, all right here. So I'm going to use for my line this shade. Okay, I'm also going to use that on his legs. And inside his mouth, I'm going to go for this color. And then maybe on his shoes, this color. And then my green. Now I'm going to go to my purple. And I will be using the different shades of purple. And I could actually color each of these grapes a little bit different of a shade of purple. But let me get some of my purples over here so we can see them, my values. Okay, well, here's some. So I'm going to color her lips this deep color. And maybe her wings this color. And she has these um, spectacular high heels on. So I'm going to color those. And her legs. And she's got some fun hair, so I'm just going to create some fun crayon lines up here. Okay. okay. Then we've done... So now we're on just the blue, right? So I need the shades of blue. Okay. So I think I'm going to make this water this color. It's very bright blue. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to start to color the blue on my creature. And okay. Okay, and I may create some crayon lines to come off each of them, actually. Now, at this point, I'm ready to do my empty space. Now, because we have so many colors, we have, in fact, the rainbow on our paper, we want to keep our background to a neutral color. Now, if you would like to leave it white, that is an option. Now, Ms. Eskew on her other one, you can see I put this kind of um, gray, a neutral color around it. And I left some white spaces because I didn't want to get too close to my marker. But you have the option of using marker with water and a neutral color to fill in the background. You can just leave it white or you can put a little around the edges. I think I'm going to put a little this time just around the edges, but not inside the color wheel. And then I'll, I'm going to pause it and then I'll come back and show you. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you at least me getting started and then I'll pause it and show you the finished product. So I can't use a color I've already used. So that pretty much leaves me to um, brown or black. And I kind of did my um, black last time. So I think I'm going to utilize this kind of brown color. But brown is still kind of a warmer color, so it might be better for you to use the neutral color of black if you want. Or just leave it white. But I'm just going to put a little in some of my spaces. And like I said, you can just leave it white. And I'm not going to do it everywhere. But you can see. And remember, if you don't have watercolor paint, then you can use um, markers with a little water on top. Okay, so I'll pause it, finish this part up, and then I'll just show you.